Hey, question. What makes a game accessible? I sat on this for some time now. A few months back, I was playing a game of Valorant, and my friend saw an Astra Star placed next to her. She asked me, hey, did you place a star here? And I said, no, like, what, you can't tell the difference? She said, dude, I'm colorblind. This bothered me. Not because my friend is colorblind, no, but because Valorant didn't properly accommodate those who were colorblind. In fact, this bothered me so much that I went out of my way to use Pilestone and use their colorblind vision simulator. And what I found from there is that it's incredibly difficult to tell the difference between an ally and an enemy's Astra Star if you're colorblind to certain colors. How is this such a miss? Okay, let's start with a much more simpler question. What is accessibility? Accessibility means the quality of being easily reached, entered, or used by people who have a disability. Keep that one in mind because we'll be using it for the rest of the video. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, an easy tool that a lot of able-bodied players may overlook is sensitivity in key bindings. Key bindings allow the user to set one of the 104 keys or less on their keyboard to perform an action in game. For example, a lot of people may rather use their mouse tool to jump instead of the space bar. They confuse me. And sensitivity is how sensitive your mouse is to your movement and where it places the cursor on your screen, using both your game and mouse settings to determine where to place it. Because of this, sensitivity has allowed anyone to play the game in a way that makes them feel comfortable. This has gone even into mice sensitivity, or DPI, or dots per inch if you wish to be a nerd, which can be used in almost every single gaming mouse I can think of. Simply put, sensitivity and key bindings help able and disabled players play the game. Whether you have a wide range of motion and thus are able to use the full spectrum of your keyboard, or may only be able to press a certain amount of buttons, the game will accommodate you. Okay, so what about the bag? An example of bad accessibility can be seen in Magic the Gathering, a card game that I played excessively all my life. Oh. Oh, I'm just dead. Oh, he's playing Hammer Time, dude. Should have played around it. From the set Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, Wizard of the Coast added a neon style to the card Hidetsugu Devouring Chaos. To get on the wear, this may seem rather tame to say new style of order for people to collect in an already collectible card game. However, throughout Magic's history, the border of the card has helped people see the card's color identity, which means it is entirely possible for a player to mistake the color identity of his suit as red, green, blue, or multicolor, which is represented by gold, yellow, I guess, when in fact it is mono black. A player may accidentally cast Doomblade on it, which will do nothing, give a creature protection for the color of his suku that it's not, thinking it'll be saved, or a card like Stone Cold Serpent is safe to block because the player thinks it's a multicolor card, which it's not. I wouldn't worry too much about this card, however. It was released in little quantity only to premium wizard play networks, whatever that means. And it's about $1,500 for the red one, which at the time of this recording is about 300 subs to me on Twitch, which I would argue is a better use of your money. Shameless, not as shameless as Wizard of Coast, making subpar content and surcharging it and thinking they're succeeding as a company. Okay, what about the good? Recently, Naughty Dog re-released for the 20 millionth time, The Last of Us Part 1. It actually added more tools for different ranges of players so they can still play the game, which is amazing. We added award-winning accessibility features. Every single accessibility option that we offer, that's a barrier removed for someone. Throughout my time working on this essay, I would argue that accessibility should be part of the game and can be seen as a game feature instead of a disability setting. Take Valorant, for example. Instead of having the enemy highlight colors in the color blindness tab, they instead put it into general along with sensitivity settings. This, in return, has allowed many players, both novice and pro, to adopt this feature and make it part of everyday conversations with other players. I would also argue that having a professional player champion for a new tool will allow the tool to be more accepted. One that comes to mind is the box. A machine that was designed by Hacks Money, a professional player in the Smash Bros. community, who 
developed the box after being diagnosed with arthritis for playing the game too much. To clarify, this isn't just a random player. He's considered the 19th best player in 2015 prior to his diagnosis. Which, after much pushback, he released a manifesto in 2018 to justify the existence of the box. The manifesto goes into great detail about the hardware and button locations to prevent arthritis, including a long list of nerves to prevent the box from being superior to the original GameCube controller. And after 144 pages, Hax concludes, As evidenced by its overwhelming demand, the box will likely go down as one of the biggest leaps forward in the history of Melee. HAL Laboratory may have created a masterpiece back in 2001, but nothing is perfect. In recent years, we have come to embrace facts that the future of this game lies within our hands. Software modifications and third-party controllers have gone being radical ideas to household names. As Melee remains alive as ever in 2018, it is paramount that the evolution of the industry continues to prosper with the legalization of the box. As a result of the publication of the manifesto, it has led to widespread adoptability from both disabled and able-bodied players in the community, as well as fostering a growing community on Discord as a recording of this video. I actually had the opportunity to speak to Hacks himself about the box. I asked if he thinks that people would still embrace the box and its legality if he wasn't as high as a rank as he was. He believes it's a storyline at the time that has helped towards making people want the box to be legal. A professional player, unable to play the game he loves, with no other option, develops a new controller so that he can compete. Thank you for answering my question, Axe. Okay, so what if you don't have a professional player to speak up about these issues? What now? While working on this video, I have followed Mr. Toes, a content creator on TikTok who is a highly skilled player and has tremors, which under stress can cause a player to sporadically shake, which in a precision-based game can be devastating. Something that Mr. Toes knows all too well. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Too close. Okay, Tim gets out there here. I win these. He got the last there, there, there. I have gotten in contact with JC, another content creator who I met through Mr. Toes' Discord. And I'll let him introduce himself, his life experience, and the solutions he's attempted to use with success and fail. I've always been primarily into gaming, and I've always had a disability in a sense that's never been diagnosed fully because they can't figure out what it is. They just know it's kind of similar to a lot of other disabilities. Uh, they've tested my chromosome for Parkinson's. I think it's my 13th. And then, uh... I asked JC about the tools that he uses to help him with his tremors. Here are some of the tools that he said. So I'd have to say the product that's just, the only product that's really mainly helped me is, uh, actually there's third, four. So my, my mouse pad, I have the, uh, the extra large HyperX uh, Speed, which is like just this black and red mouse pad. And it's a little bit, I guess it's a little bit faster than the regular one. But then uh, my, my chair, I have the uh, armrest set a little bit below the desk so that my arm uh, has a little bit more friction when it moves. So it prevents me from shaking more. And same for my uh, my hoodie. Whenever I'm gaming, I always wear a hoodie because with my arm uh, being able to like I guess grip more. That's uh everyone's like everyone tells me get an arm sleeve things like that. But I mean my hoodie does the exact same thing. And then uh, the biggest product that help is definitely just the uh, the mouse because of how lightweight it is and it makes it easier for me to reset my aim. When JC is anticipating shaking, he will bury his wrist into the mouse pad. And I asked him, has he ever experienced rug burn? There has been like maybe a select few moments to where when I'm pushing my uh, palm down, like for example, if I'm on Valorant, uh, I'm looking at one guy, so I'm having an aim duel with him and I'm shoving my palm down to keep my aim steady. Uh, and let's say someone pops up behind me and I have to do a whole 180. Uh, sometimes I don't put two and two together and I don't think about it and I go to flick, but I'm dragging my palm across the mat. And it uh, it sometimes it does like burn me <clears throat> in a sense a little bit, like rug burn. During my conversation, I brought up the idea of mouse deacceleration. The idea is that if your mouse indicates that you are shaking, it would slow down. 
lowering the DPI. Would that work? I would say the most, the out of all the ideas you said, I think the one that would help me the most and probably people with tremors is uh, mouse deceleration because uh, we, of course, we need a decent sens sensitivity enough to be able to flick or at least uh, hit 180s. Like I said, that's why my rule of thumb is be able to hit a 180. So just in case somebody is behind me, I have enough room to turn around. But uh, that deceleration would help because, uh, you know, with the mouse uh, sensitivity deaccelerating, I would be it would combat my shaking in a sense, at least from what I think of. It may be the same thing as the wrist movement thing where it sounds good on paper, but in practice, it may be different. I don't know, but uh, that definitely does sound like a good idea. This is where you come in. Yes, you, the viewer, whether you watch this video on your own or your favorite streamer is being a react dandy. In that case, hi chat. Hope you're enjoying the video. <laughs> we should ask companies to develop tools and resources to help the able and disabled community. By doing so, it will most likely be done. Recently, Riot has added more colors to the crosshair system. That's great. Could we also add enemy highlights and maybe even apply it to enemy utility for more clarification? Customizations will help us normalize these conversations and make it easier for possible solutions to not only be developed, but also accepted. Everyone deserves to play. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you like what I do, please sure hit like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you're like, hey Panda, why don't you upload more? Well, it takes a long time, which is and also why there is this bell notification that you can click, which will help you out tremendously so you don't miss videos like this in the future. Super cool tool. Now, if you're like me, you want to know more about the online scene, then may I suggest in my previous video, The Reason Why There's No Women in Esports. A super interesting video. I highly recommend it. There's a lot of women in the scene that I thought I would never be able to communicate with and was able to because of that video. I also want to give a big thank you to AJC and Hack Some Money for speaking with me and answering my questions. This video would literally never be made without their help. So thank you so much. And if you're like, well, Panda, I want more of you. And don't worry, uh, there's plenty of me to go around. For example, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at Sunly Pandas. And uh, if you got like a Stranger Stumps on around, I, I won't hesitate to take them off your hands if you want them gone. If not, I'll sell it for your prime. <laughs> Jokes aside, thanks so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate all the support I got from this and the videos that came before it. So thanks again, everyone. Goodbye for now. And I hope it made you think. Until next time.